Ah, Welcome back to Moose on the Loose. My name's David. Today we've got a video here with Pierre Polyev. It was filmed just today at a gas station. He dropped some facts about what's going on in Canada and it is a sad state of affairs. For example, one of the stats you'll hear here is numerous times you've heard that there's 20 homeless camps in Nova Scotia, in Halifax. And now there's 35. It's gone from 20 homeless camps to 35 homeless camps in Halifax alone. At what point do we need some sort of other intervention to solve the problem here? It's not a tax hike in April 1st. That's not what we need right now. We don't need Justin Trudeau's 23% increase on the carbon tax, which they keep denying. There are so many interviews I watch with all his ministers and they all just keep barfing out the same garbage rhetoric with no scientific proof. So we've got Pierre Polyev seen here about to take a bite out of crime. He's gonna have to with the amount of crime that's going on in Canada. Two million Canadians line up at food banks every single month in, in scenes that are reminiscent of the Great Depression. 32% of charities are turning people away because they've run out of money. 8,000 people have signed up for a Facebook network that shares tips on how to jump into a dumpster in order to get yourself a meal because that's how desperate people have become. I just learned that a local military base uh, has 50 of its members going to the food bank here in New Brunswick. We just come from St. John's, Newfoundland where I met with the food bank there. Their demand is up 45% in four years in part because Trudeau's carbon tax on the farmers who and fishers who produce the food and the truckers who ship the food. They're having to bail out other food banks that are worried they might have to go under. After eight years of Trudeau in St. John's. I should warn everyone here, what's coming up is quite disturbing to say the least. Just a heads up. After eight years of Trudeau in St. John's, things have gotten so desperate that families cannot bury their deceased loved ones. There are 28 dead bodies in chilling containers outside of a hospital in St. John's next to a dumpster because their families cannot afford a burial or a cre cremation. This would have been unimaginable before Justin Trudeau. 50 military families in Aramunk, New Brunswick are using a... a, a a food bank. We have CBC Nova Scotia reporting that Nova Scotians got extreme power bills uh, recently, which are leaving many of them choosing between eating and turning the lights on. There are now 35, 35 homeless encampments in Halifax. Common sense conservatives are fighting back. And that's what brings me here today. Trudeau's April 1st carbon tax hike of 23% is scheduled to take effect in just a few weeks, April Fool's Day, and with Justin Trudeau and the Liberals, the joke is on you. Trudeau will hike gas prices at stations like this one. Home heating bills will rise across the country. Farmers, fishermen, truckers, who all bring us food, will be paying more and passing on those prices at the grocery store to Canadians who are already starving. That's why Common sense conservatives are standing with 70% of Canadians in the polls and 70% of provincial premiers who have called for Trudeau to spike the hike, cancel this <clears throat> heartless and cruel April 1st tax hike. There will be two common sense conservative motions before the House of Commons next week. Liberal and NDP members of Parliament will have to decide whether they vote for their constituents affordable gas, food and homes or whether they will vote with Justin Trudeau to dig deeper into the pockets of Canadians who are freezing and starving. Something to note there, I was watching another interview which I'll probably do another video. The NDP were asked about the carbon tax and they basically said they're fine with it as but the only thing they want is to remove it off of gas and everything else is fine to have it though so it's interesting to see them take that stance it's like they're they're half in and half out at this point what are they only half care about climate change does that mean you get half a rebate oh geez 
All conservatives, thank you. All, you can see where people stand here. They're on side with the common sense conservatives to spike the, the hike and ax the tax. We're going to have abundant and affordable energy again. Canadians will bring home powerful paychecks that buy affordable food, gas, and homes in safe neighborhoods. And that will be the choice. Let's bring it home. Do you think the Energy East pipeline project could be revived? And if so, how would you help that come along as Prime Minister if you're elected? I, I strongly supported the Energy East pipeline. I think it is insane that we are in, here in St. John, we are importing 130,000 barrels of Saudi Arabian Nigerian oil at the same time as our Western pr producers are blocked from selling their product to other Canadians. Um, Justin Trudeau killed the Energy East pipeline. Can someone explain that to me? Why oil in the West is not sold to the East? That is absolutely insane. I laughed there a bit too, because the guy asking the question said, if you get elected, let's get real, man. Like 99 point whatever percent chance Polyev wins. Yeah, he's winning. He's gonna be the next prime minister. Justin Trudeau killed the Energy East pipeline. His liberal M New Brunswick MPs helped him kill it. Um, common sense conservatives will repeal C the unconstitutional C-69 and replace it with a new law, but gets things built. And uh, I will support Canadian pipelines that deliver Canadian energy. Today, if we had the Energy East pipeline, we could pump Western petroleum, put it on a ship, send it to Europe, break European dependence on Putin. Justin Trudeau has a pro-Putin energy policy. He's blocked natural gas liquefaction projects and the Energy East pipeline, which would have allowed the Europeans to, supply, to power their economy with clean Canadian energy rather than dirty Russian oil and gas. Um, the industrial carbon tax, like any corporate tax, gets passed along to consumers. So, Mr. Polyev, would you cancel this or would you keep the industrial carbon tax? Well, most heavy industry has an exemption from the carbon tax. The uh, carbon tax applies on small business, small, medium sized businesses, some factories and all consumers, but large cement plants, um, and other industrial factories are exempt. Should the Prime Minister have said yes to Premier Legault's demand to transfer all immigration powers to Quebec? Trudeau caused the crisis. Let's start with that. He unleashed chaos in our immigration system by keeping Roxham Road open for years after the Americans offered to close it by removing the, vec the, the, the visa requirement for Mexico that conservatives, common sense conservatives had put in place, which led asylum claims to rise from 250 to 17,000 uh, in just eight years, with n almost 90% of those claims not found to be legitimate by the Immigration Refugee Board. Um, more than half of the Infl intake of refugees have been going to Quebec, even though that province has only 22% of the national population. My commitment is to reinstate common sense conservative immigration policies that, l that block illegal immigration, that discourage false asylum claims, that bring legitimate refugees, economic immigrants, and family members here to, to be part of, the, the, of, of Canada, but do so in an orderly fashion with numbers that uh, line up with the availability of social services and housing. And of course, we would work with all provinces, including Quebec, to do that. Thank you. Becoming a major problem, obviously we've got a deficit of 5 million houses, so that's why the housing crisis is so bad. Yet Trudeau keeps bringing in half a million immigrants per year because he's an idiot. I'm not exactly clear on what immigrants newly landed immigrants get here i've seen all sorts of things from they get nothing to they get two thousand dollars they get ten thousand dollars i've heard all sorts of things there's a guy in the states who uh was frustrated that the immigrants the the undocumented ones could show up in new york and just get a free phone and money and all this kind of stuff so 
as an American, he just went in there and pretended he was a guy from, was it Belgium or something, and just walked in and gave a fake name and they gave him a phone and money and stuff. It's just, it's getting outrageous. What is your relationship with Premier Higgs and what policies are you aligned on? First and foremost, the carbon tax. Premier Higgs has joined with common sense conservatives across the country to axe the tax. And tonight I will thank him and all New Brunswick Conservatives for locking arms with us on that. People in places like St. John, in Moncton, in Fredericton can't afford yet another Trudeau tax. Uh, what they need is affordable, abundant energy, and that's what they will get when I axe the tax. The last thing we want is for, you know, after I axe the tax, for there to be another Trudeau-style provincial government that puts it back on. And that's the risk. Whenever you vote liberal, you know you should hold on to your wallet because they'll be coming for your money. That's the same here in BC. We've got NDP and we've got we've had that carbon tax here longer, I think, than anywhere else. I didn't see a dime back from that. I haven't got a dollar back. And you know what's interesting about that? I haven't talked about this on the channel here is by having our own carbon tax but not getting a rebate, we've already had things go up. But then when Justin Trudeau implements the carbon tax across Canada, it also jacks rates up because now things being shipped on transit through trucks and whatever, you know, air air delivery, etc. There's there's carbon tax on the jet fuel and obviously the gas these truckers are driving around with and it jacks up the prices. So it's like you're almost getting an extra one and a half, like you're getting a full carbon tax for just living in BC plus an extra half a carbon tax from anything if you ship things in. It's just ridiculous. Like it's absolutely ridiculous thanks guys appreciate it go say hello to these nice people yeah let's bring it home it's, it's amazing just standing there doing that speech you have three different vehicles honk the horns and support driving past that tells you something there next up i've got a very short clip i want to show you out of this 46 minute video that i went through oh, i swear if they want to punish people in jail just have them listen to justin trudeau in these speeches it is brutal people will be slamming on the doors begging them to turn the tvs off and never commit a crime ever again but uh so this is a union uh they called some guy and they had him basically have every union guy you could get show up it's kind of a sad little gathering here but it's he's talking directly to these union guys and i just want to point out this one little section here that is what this is about. This is how we build a stronger future. And that's exactly why we're doing it. Now, it's in committee now. We're watching very, very carefully what the Conservatives are doing. Because we know that a leopard can't change its spots. Let us not now pretend uh, that the Conservatives are going to be a friend to Labour. And a perfect example of that is their disinterest in the massive investments we're bringing in with Stellantis and Nexstar. So he's at a battery plant here. He's in at the new Windsor battery plant, just tooting these guys' horn. There's actually, this one guy here is a real uh, hype man, the guy in the blue. You'll see here, the, the guy with the black with the blue shirt comes in and says Trudeau is wrong when he's speaking. And Trudeau doesn't like that. I think he's saying it in a friendly manner, but it's just funny, this narcissist can't even handle uh, him straightening his facts. Merci beaucoup, mes chers amis. In this union community, without saying something, the facts of the matter is this. Come here, young man. Come here. Come here. I, I just want to say to the Prime Minister of Canada, when I walked in here today, this young man said to me, I want to be the future Prime Minister of Canada. So I want to introduce you to the future vice president. This is the Prime Minister of Canada. Tell him you want his job. I want your job. Okay. Look how Trudeau's standing with his legs crossed. Like, what? God, dude, just come on, man. Just man up for a minute. Just one minute, man. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, there's no difference in this than Pierre Elliott Trudeau walking around with his children thinking someday that his children could be the Prime Minister of Canada. And as a parent, you'd be incredibly proud if your son became the Prime Minister of Canada. So I congratulate you for carrying your father's footsteps. Yeah, not in this case. This <laughs> you use back to work legislation, which is a mistake in your speech, because what he there was talking about is legislation that will stop scabs from going into federal employers 
in this country. And the facts of the matter is, why? See, Trudeau's covering his face here. He actually doesn't like being called out on anything. Am I fired up? Dave, uh, Dave knows this. Young Dag Nolan knows this. I am fired up because I got woke up this morning to a call. Once was a crown corporation. Jabs are going into the workplace to the largest, largest employer in this country. I swear I got scabs watching this video. <laughs> and all I want to say to you, Mr. Trudeau, is that the legislation is in the House. We would ask you to expedite that legislation because there will be no scabs working in a federal jurisdiction in Canada starting today. Members in Halifax, and we will defend unions in our country. This guy's a good hype man, that's for sure. So I ask you again to raise that I will. I will. and keep going. Thank, thank you, Ken. Thank you for correction. Thank you for everything you do. Ken Lewis, everyone. Um, allow me. So allow me to do that line again. And we'll get the applause off of it. And we'll get the applause off of it because we want to get a nice clean. Uh, <laughs> we get a good clean line for the marketing here. This is just gross to watch, man. And that's why this government is bringing in replacement worker legislation. <laughs> get that cheesy cheese bucket smile we all hate, man. Just just ham it up for all these workers. This is so sad, dude. Anti-scab legislation is going to allow you to have all the strength you need at the bargaining table to move forward. I'm getting scabs from watching this. We're going to shut this off now. <laughs> I definitely, I can feel them. I can feel them. Side note, look at the frame I stopped on. <laughs> oh, God. Trudeau is just such a fool. He is just, this guy, we can't get rid of this guy fast enough. It's really sad to hear all those facts at the beginning there, Paul, I was talking about, like, bodies being frozen behind the, the hospital because people can't afford to have proper burials. Like, this is just sad, man. When will this guy just grow a heart and just do what's right for the people in this country? Just once, Justin. Just once. Uh, two final quick clips here. So this one is so ridiculous. The Toronto uh, police chief is now suggesting people leave their key fobs at the front door where the hackers can steal the signal. So if you're not familiar with this, basically they use a little radio antenna. They go up to your door and they amplify the signal coming off your fob. And then it allows them to start your car and steal it. Now, people have been putting their key fobs into a pouch, which blocks the signal. But what ends up happening is then people just come in, kick in the door, and they try to find it. So you're more likely to get uh, pew pewed in that situation. So this is the solution, is to allow people to steal your hard-earned, the, the vehicle you've bought with hard-earned cash. This is pathetic. To prevent the possibility of being attacked in your home, leave your fobs at your front door because they're breaking into your home to steal your car. They're, they don't want anything else. A lot of them that they're arresting have guns on them and they're not toy guns, they're real guns. They're loaded. That's why Galinsky says they will be installing the door stops and taking YPR's advice seriously. Why are we not implementing something more severe for these people? These people are mostly coming over from Africa and stealing all our cars and shipping them back over. Enough's enough. If we put in a precedent where these people get stuck in solitary confinement for five years or just some horrific punishment for these crimes i don't think they're going to be committing them deport them to north korea do something with these people get them out of our country the, most of these thieves that are stealing cars i mean look look it up none of them are from canada they're all from like middle of africa where all the cars are being shipped to like it's time for the government to step up and and put on the big boy pants and put in some real punishments and finally, we've got a clip here. This is what I like to see the Palestine protester doing, absolutely harassing the heck out of Justin Trudeau while he's having a $1,725 per plate dinner. <laughs> That's just egregious, man. Explore the river to the sea. Wherever he goes, keep protesting. That's where we're going to wrap up today's episode. Hopefully we get some sort of rays of hope this week of new stuff coming out. There's developments going on in the Arrive can, so hopefully somebody's getting arrested there. And maybe we get a name, finally, from Christian Firth, if he actually decides to speak, of who at the government basically 
okayed it for him to be making $2,600 per hour to steal our money, basically doing nothing. Scandals all over the place, but something's going to break. Something's going to open up. We will get our retribution. We will get our justice. It will just take time. We have to be patient. Hopefully all of you are doing well. Thanks for watching the end of the video. Be sure to subscribe. Turn on the post notifications so you get notified when my videos come out. Stay warm. Stay fed. I'll see you guys in the next one.